welcome to Nitty Gritty. I'm your host, Ryan Biller, and joining me today is Shanae Mundy, the Director of Student Life on Campus. Shanae, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So I guess we'll just jump right in. What exactly is Student Life, for those of us watching who might not know? So Student Life is a very broad term. It encompasses a lot of things, but essentially I describe our job as to make sure the students have fun while they're here, which sounds really easy. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of uh, you know logistics that go into that. We have a lot of moving pieces, but we oversee the clubs and organizations on campus. We also oversee um, the outdoor program and the intramural program. So between all of that, we have um, over 100 clubs on campus. That keeps us on our toes at all times. And then we have our orgs that are always moving, doing great things. And then the outdoor program and intramurals um, obviously have a lot of moving pieces as well. So, and then on top of that, we put on other events, whether that be um, Parents Weekend, Welcome Week, Homecoming, all of those type of things. So we're just moving around in different ways, trying to make sure students enjoy their time here at CMU. Right. Now, you are the director of Student Life. Yes. So what exactly does that position entail for you? So it's... Um, it, again, it's a lot. It's a, a lot of moving pieces, but so we have students running these organizations and these clubs. It's a lot of um, making sure they're following fiscal rules. There's a lot of money that gets involved with those type of things. Um, so watching the behind the scenes and just, you know, some of the fun side of it is just getting to know the students. That's my favorite part of it all is working with the students. Um, you know, sometimes we're dealing with a tough situation, but usually we're dealing with the fun stuff. And so trying to help them create um, an event or whatever it may be and help their idea come to fruition. So it's a lot of the business side of on the back of things and just trying to figure out how we can better it, the experience of one student or a large group of students. Yeah. I hear that you guys have had a lot of turnover recently. Mm -hmm. So what exactly does that mean for student life and how have you guys had to adjust? Yeah, so within the actual student life office we have three professional staff. There's myself, the director, and then we have an operations manager, Julie Stump. She's been with us for three years now and has kind of been our solid rock through all this. Um, I started in May and then we also lost our previous assistant director of student life which was Gail Howe and then we brought on Avery Cantrell last month. Um, he was previously with Residence Life came over as our assistant director and has done a great job. So we have two of the three of us are new, which brings some challenges, but I, uh, I think it actually brings a lot better opportunities. Yeah. We've got some fresh ideas. There's things we can build on. Student Life has done some great things for the previous years and great things we can add to, but we also have new ideas um, that we can bring and uh, bring new perspectives and things like that. So definitely, been some challenges, but I think we're getting through them and um, in the end going to provide a better experience for our students, which is the goal. What are some of those challenges that you guys might face having a, a lot of a new staff? You know, I think the biggest thing I've found is for me personally, when we say, okay, we're going to plan this event and just trying to figure out how it's been done before and asking around, was this successful? Was this fun? Was this something we enjoyed? Or is this something we need to revamp? Um, it's also fallen a lot, you know, a lot of credit goes to Julie. She's had to train two people and that's no easy task. Yeah. And on top of that, do her own job. Um, so we, there's a lot of learning. Uh, there's a steep learning curve with student life again with all those moving pieces and with a lot of budgets. Each of those clubs and each of those organizations have their own budgets that we have to watch and are ultimately responsible for not letting them go over budget and also helping them use their money in appropriate ways to better the club or the organization. You mentioned earlier that you guys have over 100 clubs that you guys mm -hmm. oversee. So when you intertwine both the financial aspect and then the, just the social aspect of it, how do you guys keep all, how do you guys keep all those clubs in, in check and in track? It's, it's been a tough balance. It's, you can't, I can't call every club president and say, oh, you know, once a week and say, hey, this is where we're at with your balance and this is what you spent this week. That's just, there's not enough hours in the day. Yeah. And so a lot of it falls on the students, which is a great learning experience for them. Um, clubs are asked to have treasurers that keep responsibility for that. And in the end, it's their responsibility to keep track of what their starting budget was, what they're bringing in through fundraising or whatever else there is, or and then also what they spend. And so it is a great learning experience for the students. Um, sometimes this is the first time they've had to keep 
um, financial records. They've usually just had a bank account where they swipe it until someone tells them to stop. And so yeah. now we're putting yeah. that responsibility in their hand. And it's a great learning experience, which is in the end what we want to do. We want to help grow young leaders. And those clubs are a great opportunity to do that. Um, but we do have to provide oversight and help them. You know, they, they get stuck. And we're not expecting any club to be perfect. We're expecting there to be issues. Um, but that's where we come in. We're there to help when they're trying to make big purchases or say they try to travel. A lot of clubs travel to conferences or something. We're there to help. We're not trying to leave them out by themselves. We're there to help guide them. And I'm sure it probably helps to have them be more self-reliant and mm -hmm. incorporate that responsibility element. Um, to switch gears a little bit, what are some of the more popular clubs that you guys have noticed? Um, there's, it's hard to say popular because, you know, every group has a different popularity with a different group on campus, but we have a wide variety of clubs from whether they're interest-based or major-based, so like an engineering club or student nursing association, things like that. Um, we have Student Veterans uh, Association. We have religious-based clubs like Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Those are some of the, I don't, you know, some of the big ones that do some good things. There's a lot of other ones that I'm, I, if I try to name them, I'll leave some out. Yeah. But um, within that, we also have Greek Life. Um, so we have five uh, Greek organizations on campus, two sororities and three fraternities. They fall under kind of the club aspect as well. So there's just so many different ways to be involved in there. Um, I like to say there's something for everyone um, if you're willing to find something that way or if there really isn't we help people start clubs all the time. If they're, if you really like pizza and want to start a pizza club we can do that and yeah. so that's something we're always expanding. Our club list is changing yearly and so we grow with them like that and it's fun way for us like selfishly for me as a professional staff I like learning through these clubs too and getting exposed to new things. You spoke about Greek, uh, Greek life excuse mm -hmm. me and on a lot of other college campuses Greek life can sometimes be a bit of an issue and so what's your what's student what's student life's relationship between you guys and Greek life? We love our Greek life they do a lot of great things um, one thing people overlook with any Greek organization whether it's here or at a big school in the south where they have those big houses yeah. is the main purpose of Greek life is philanthropy and so we try to help them with service projects or what other philanthropic goals they have yes they go have their fun too this this is college everyone should have fun Greek life or not and yeah. but they uh, their main goal is philanthropy and building a sisterhood or a brotherhood with each other and gaining those lifelong friends and so um, we work with them very closely. We, um, Avery, our assistant director, oversees yeah. them and does a great job in helping them plan events um, and helping them grow as young leaders too. It, sorority and fraternity life, same as student life, is growing young leaders and putting them in those positions where they can do that as well. So we work closely with them trying to grow Greek on this campus. Um, we're, we're not the campus that has the big Greek houses, and right. I don't know if that's our desire at this point. We, we just we are, enjoy building that brotherhood and sisterhood for yeah. those students. To backtrack to what you had said a little bit earlier about students trying to create their own clubs, mm -hmm. how does somebody go about, what does the process look like for a student who wants to create their own club? It's really easy. You need you and two friends and an advisor. So you need someone to be the president, the vice president, and the cab rep. CAP is our club advisory board. And you go online and onto OrgSync, which is an app in MavZone. And you submit a request form. You just put all those students' name, your faculty advisor's name, and their emails. And then we'll you know, go through it. Obviously, we have to make sure it's not a club on campus already. Um, just kind of check some basic things. There's usually no, no big like background check or anything like that. It's just we make sure this is uh, something our students want and if three students want it that's great and we will also give them 50 bucks to get started. When a new club is formed they get fifty dollars from Student Life to help you know maybe it's host a first event and do some root beer floats or order some pizza something simple um, or getting some supplies to table on campus so we try to help them get started there. With over a hundred clubs that you guys advise is there ever much overlap between seeing a new club be created and the kind that they want to have their club oriented around? Do you see much of an overlap between existing clubs and then mm -hmm. new clubs? Um, not necessarily. Uh, there are some, like within art, there's 
you know, you can have painting, you can have sculptures and stuff like that. So we have some of that um, where some of the students may overlap, but the interests typically don't. Yeah. If we saw one that was uh, really closely overlapped, we may talk to them, is this something you guys want to collaborate on? And if not, you know, we're here, if this is student, what students want, that's what we want. We're student driven. So we don't want to force a collaboration, but um, if it's something they can partner on and grow bigger together, that's yeah. great too. Other than obviously with the amount of clubs that you guys have, you guys definitely try and support a lot of the social and fun aspects of mm -hmm. college. But you guys also have an initiative such as Mavrides or Campus Safety and those sorts of things. And there's an initiative to, for with safety. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little more about how those are implemented and the success that you guys have seen with those? Yeah. So we, like I said, our job is to make sure people have fun. And along with fun comes safety concerns. So we try to align with that and do what yeah. we can to keep students safe. So Mavrides, like you mentioned, is one of our organizations yeah. on campus. Um, students can call the number at, on Thursday to Saturday nights, 9 p.m. to 3 a.m., and get a free ride anywhere in Grand Junction. No questions asked. Um, if it's just a ride to a party, home from a party, or sometimes we just get calls that people want to ride to Taco Bell. And that's okay too. We're here to give a ride, like I said, no questions asked. And so that's a really great resource. You know, say you drove to a party with friends and you're ready to leave before them. Cool, call Mavrides, no problem. And so we can get you home safely so you're not walking around at night at midnight. Um, that's just anywhere you live, that's not a safe thing to do. So we're offering that to students. Again, no charge there. And that's actually driven by the cars are actually driven every weekend by clubs and organizations. They volunteer to do that and they get a $20 donation to their club for doing that. So it's other students driving you around. It's students answering the phone when you call. It's completely student driven. Um, another one for campus safety is Party Smart. So uh, if you're hosting a party off campus on a Friday night and you uh, you can come into our office, Student Life, in the second floor of the University Center and bring in you and someone else that lives at the house that are hosting the party, bring in their driver's licenses and we copy it, they fill out a form and they have to do a quick training with uh, police here on campus. It's really quick, just some basic yeah. rules of hosting a party safely and um, not disrupting neighbors. We want to be good neighbors. And what happens then is then when they have their party, they um, say a neighbor calls and complains that they're being too loud. We, the police will then call the people that um, submitted their name for the party and give them a warning. Instead of coming and uh, giving a noise citation or something like that, which no one wants, they give them that warning of, hey, you need, you need to shut it down. And that class they do with the police helps to give them the skills to do that tactfully and not you know anger a bunch of your friends that came to your party yeah. um, and then um, it gives them that warning now if the call comes in a second time they're they're gonna, probably going to get a citation right. but we try to give them that first warning and just give them skills and party hosting um, another thing that's offered on CMU's campus is the safe walk program yeah. you can call a campus safety assistant anytime and if you're, say you've been studying at the library till 1 a.m., um, we've all been there, and yeah, you want to walk true. back to your car, and you know, there's not a, a parking lot super close to the library, and you don't want to walk at night. That's okay. Um, someone will come walk you to your car, make sure you get there safely, and just give you that added security. It doesn't have to be from the library. It can be from anywhere on campus, um, but it's just another resource to help students stay safe. Stay safe. Stay yeah. safe. Yeah, no worries. Um, that's just about all the time we have. Shanae, thanks okay. for being here. Uh, join us mm -hmm. next time on Nitty Gritty. Shanae Mundy, the Director of Student Life. Uh, mm -hmm. Tune in next time.